Hi there, my name is Alex Fidel. I'm an independent candidate for mayor of Encinitas. I'm not controlled by any banks, political parties, or corporations, and I fundamentally oppose the two-party system. The job description when I get sworn into office is an oath to uphold the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And by that measure, every single member of city council has failed at their basic job description. Now to me, local issues are a given. Fixing the roads, the city is 50 million plus dollars behind on basic road repairs. Upholding Prop A, the budget catastrophe of insane pensions and salaries, those are all a given for me and standing for those issues. But I will stand for more because silence is compliance. I will not be silent on any of the injustices committed by the state or federal government that the city does comply with. And the Constitution allows for states and local governments to stand up to injustices. And that's the Tenth Amendment, which allows for states' rights, such as nullification. Uh, the city takes grant money from the Department of Homeland Security, and the contract that comes along with that grant tells them to enforce the USA Patriot Act. And well, they'll say on the city council, that that's not a local issue. Just, just relax while we slip into fascism, while they take money without even admitting that they're shredding the Bill of Rights. I'm an independent journalist and media entrepreneur, and my job was to expose people in positions of power. That has become a way of life and existence for me, so I take that same approach to politics. I don't believe you should ever rely on one person for change. In order for real change to happen, you, awaken the people, need to get more involved in your local governments. I can't secure your rights without you taking part in the process. Malcolm X said that revolution is not a spectacle. Everyone participates. So we all need to get involved and make these politicians regret that the banks ever installed them in power in the first place. Go to my website, freeencinitas.org. It's an educational thing to wake up the people because we need to take the power back. Thank you, guys. Well, as I mentioned before, I, am, I started my own independent journalism outlet. My goal was to speak truth to power and break down the left-right paradigm that corporate media brainwashes us with on a daily basis and basically it installs a two-party system into our psychology and our collective unconscious. And so my job was to really expose people in positions of power. I exposed how, regardless of whether it's a Republican or a Democrat in office, they're still going to commit atrocious war crimes across the globe as they are doing today. And so I've tried to ascend to city council meetings and I've done so getting involved with the local government, testing the waters. And I did for about a year throughout 2013, but I felt like because of my age, the city council was being very condescending towards me. They never took anything I had to say seriously and they never responded to anything that I had to say. And I feel that's because they do not represent the people. They represent corporations and banks and other special, special interests. So. I do not represent any of that, and um, yeah, thank you. My life's mission is to fight the power until I'm out of breath like Malcolm X. Now, I do not think that politicians are superhuman beings. They're people just like you and I, and we should never try to demagogue a politician or put them anything higher than that. So I am far from a perfect person, but what I can guarantee is I, I have integrity. I refuse to sell my soul to corporations, to banks, to political parties, to any of these special interests that want to take your rights away and tell you how to live via the barrel of a gun. Uh, I believe that um, I will go to bat for you every day to prevent all these people who want to collude for special interest for their own personal gain to be a dictator. I will fight them every day for your rights in, in, as mayor, but it also requires your participation. We have to have strength in numbers. Hundreds of us need to occupy City Hall as soon as possible. Thank you, guys. Well, I think the first thing we need to address is where do these places get the funding? And they get it from a fractional reserve banking system. They don't have any of their own funds. They exist on debt only. So we need to uh, save off the loans and uh, also address zoning. Like it, 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 it's a corporate zoning structure that allows for the, really a consumption industrial complex. Why not with all this you know, farming that we're going to have, ha allow for instead organic cooperatives, food cooperatives, holistic you know, medicinal uh, cooperatives, um, 
you know, places that 3D print hemp cars and stuff like that. We need to get on the wave of the future instead of being stuck in this, you know, uh, uh, consumption bubble that's going to crash our economy. We're doing all this consumption and we're pushing all the production off the slave labor in China and the dollar is going to collapse because of it. So let's stop the root cause of bars uh, proliferating, which is the loans and the banking system. At the local level, we can use the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution to nullify things like Common Core, as well as federal curriculum mandates, because what the federal government passes down to us is, a, is an imperialist view of history. They don't teach us that. I never learned about Malcolm X. I never learned that since 1945, the United States has attempted to overthrow more than 50 foreign governments and killed millions of people in the process. And uh, another thing that we do is we, uh, we send kids to jail and we ruin their futures for a long, long time over a small possession of of drugs, and drugs are a bad thing, but handcuffs don't fix it. We need to get doctors involved, it's a health issue. We need to get families involved. We need to get the school supervisors involved to make sure that their lives are getting back on track. Um, putting them in handcuffs ruin their, ruins their lives for, forever. It doesn't get them a job, doesn't get them college loans, and it basically feeds the private prison industrial complex, which makes them slave labor for Nintendo, packing games for cents on the dollar, so if we really want to improve kids' lives, we should stop sending them to jail and ruining their lives and the war on drugs. Now I think the uh, engineering for dealing with erosion issues is set no matter which demagogic politician you elect. So what I'm going to offer is that we change the world here in Encinitas uh, in, in the area of greenhouse gases. I don't know if you're aware of Nikola Tesla, but he was uh, researching free energy technology uh, before his lab was burned down by banker J.P. Morgan. Energy that you could just pull out of the fabric of time and space itself. No nuclear, no coal, no fracking, not even hemp oil. And that can power our cars. And, and you're not allowed to research that without being harassed by the government. So use the 10th Amendment to nullify such laws that prevent that and allow scientific freedom. I'm not promising no more electrical bills. Well, if not here, where, if not now, when? Um, and the machines for it could be 3D printed out of hemp plastic. So we, uh, I'm a real environmentalist, and those on the council are pseudo-environmentalists. So we need to produce, pursue some radical environmentalism and Google Nikola Tesla. Well, I would like to point out that um, there is some lying going on here, that both these council members voted for uh, grant money from the Department of Homeland Security multiple times, and the contract that comes along with that requires them to comply with the Patriot Act, which violates the Fourth Amendment, you know, Snowden and, every, and everything. So they're literally shredding the Constitution in front of our eyes. There was actually the use of an armored vehicle in Encinitas in 2013, and uh, I don't want to get into too many details, but if you're dealing with a suspect that has any kind of psychological or any sort of issues you call the PERT, Psychological Emergency Response Team. Well, they had nice new toys to use, so instead they, called, they brought out the SWAT teams, over one person. Um, and, and that led to an apparent suicide. If you're in a psychological, you know, uh, whatever, and there's a small army out to get you, then obviously that's what resulted. And um, really, if he was really dangerous, he would have killed the police officer right there when the officers were down, if they even allegedly shot them, and journalists use the term allegedly all the time. So, yeah, no militarization of the police. Um, I, I Honestly, I don't see uh, how that's too much of a bad thing because um, when four other council members are corporate puppets, then you should be berating them and that you, the people, need to be in there with me berating them um, because they work for you at the end of the day. They're not your masters. It's the other way around. Um, and I, I went into city council meetings alone. And so I may have sounded pessimistic before, but I'm really optimistic we had a strength in numbers. I was alone when they were voting on Homeland Security grant money. And I spoke out against the police state, and they still voted on it, and it turned out to have a contract that uh, allows them to enforce the Patriot Act, which is unpatriotic. And uh, due process means that you should try to bring someone in alive, no matter how heinous their crime. A small is set out to kill somebody.
So, yeah, due process reigns supreme. There's no asterisk on the Constitution. So what the, the sheriff should be uh, tried for treason for breaking the Constitution, for lying about having a drone, among many other things. Even searches, one person getting searched illegally should be warranted for treason and breaking the Constitution. I do not trust HUD. I've seen what they've done with the project, and they really neglect it, and it's, uh, the people that live in it are the victims. So I think we should just nullify and ignore any federal or state housing mandates. And the problem with everything is, is really the Federal Reserve's housing bubble. They, they print money to no end, and they, they cause prices to artificially rise in the bubble, so it pops eventually. And, and then you have local governments that zone only for you know, uh, suburbia. Uh, rather than, and, and they're you know destroying all what's left of our you know good soil and what's left. You know, uh, young, a lot of young people jobs are in the consumption industrial complex are few and far between nowadays. So a lot of young people will like productive jobs, growing organic food and hemp, and they could uh, live on the land and communally farm together, and um, and and that would not be in the Federal Reserve's housing bubble, and that would produce a lot more value than homes that will crash in value when the dollar collapses. And have no value rather than producing things over and over again every harvest. Uh, so we need to really uh, kick the Federal Reserve and HUD out of Encinitas. Uh, yeah, I do think that there should be an amnesty program because making things illegal, and this is what the city attorney uses to enrich himself at taxpayers' expense. Um, but at the same time, you know, permitting permitting should be as cheap and as easy and affordable as possible. I think government just makes people's lives miserable on purpose because they think you're your, they're your masters when they in fact work for us. Um, now, I'm against upzoning and all that kind of stuff because uh, it's basically for you know uh, either you know uh, government mandated housing or big corporate developers to come in and, and ruin everything. Um, so I really think that, um, aside from that, we also need to stop building uh, new homes in general as part of the uh, Federal Reserve housing bubble. How many do we really need? The reason it was it crashed because there was more supply than demand. And, and they printed all this money that uh, inflated the currency as well. So what we have now is not only a, a collapse of housing prices on the horizon, but the entire currency is going to collapse. And, and we're not immune from the laws of history. And history repeats itself beyond currency. So let's, uh, let's fix the housing situation. No, I do believe that uh, legitimate projects that help to improve the safety of the rail lines themselves, so you know, trains don't, you know, no catastrophes happen. But that should be pursued. No pet projects, no nothing. That's just just cause, just to spend a bunch of money. And we need to cut money spending in other areas, like the bloated pensions and salaries that uh, staff makes, as well as law enforcement, as well as needless things that uh, really don't offer us any benefit. As far as pedestrian safety goes. The government cannot save you from yourself. Uh, you know, making uh, crossing the tracks illegal, that's a little absurd. That's creating a police state just to push out fines and uh, gather revenue for the city. Um, and I don't know about you, but a lot of my family came from behind the Iron Curtain. So that's just one step towards, towards all that. And uh, history repeats itself. And we better wake up because if we find every little problem and stick a policeman on it, we're going to have we're going to live in a pretty dark society, and we have to decide what kind of society do we want to live in, and I hope a constitutional society. I stand against the Pacific View purchase. Uh, where are they getting the money from? Uh, they're issuing all these bonds, and guess what? My generation is picking up the tab for all of it. Now, I don't believe in state ownership of property because we've seen how uh, communism has fell, but I don't believe in corporate privatization of uh, state-owned property as well because we have seen how capitalism has failed. Um, so what it really needs to go is into the hands of people. And what will the people do? Well, if the dollar collapses, the grocery sh uh, shelves are going to go bare. So we really need to start growing our own food and going off the grid so it can, you know, people can use it for hydroponics, growing organic food. GMO seeds should be banned. Um, industrial hemp, that's... Most of the stuff that I'm wearing is made out of industrial hemp, and it can create jobs. So if we think about that. Um, most, you know, jobs are uh, bagging and everything like that. That's not going to help young people out. They can't even afford to move out of their parents' house. So let's actually grow our economy and do away with the state ownership and the corporate privatization of our resources, and no more debt-based purchases.
Uh, I'm against streetscape because the city is 50 plus million dollars behind on actual road repairs, not just how to paint the streets. Um, so let's focus on things, what's prioritized. Um, I'm an environmentalist, a real environmentalist, not a pseudo environmentalist. And really, um, I don't think we should cut down trees, but if it interferes with traffic safety, then we should cut it down and maybe replace it with some industrial hemp. Helps to pull CO2 out of the environment. Helps to take radiation out of the environment, but all the stuff from Fukushima. Restores the nutrients in the soil, hemp's not lacking matter. They put it illegal for a reason because it benefits corporations. Look up uh, William Randolph Hearst. And um, yeah, it, it would be a lot smaller than a big tree, but if it doesn't interfere with traffic safety, we should leave nature alone. Politicians should not play God. If you ignore local government, then an elite few will vote your rights away, and that is what many decades of low citizen involvement has created, ruled by busybodies, banks, and corporations. I don't have political experience, no experience taking bribes, violating people's civil liberties and individual rights, acting like a dictator, colluding with corporations, or worse. Politicians do not know what is best. But change does not rely on electing me. Vote for me in November, but please take it upon yourselves to hound the city council, not just on local issues, but more issues like protecting civil liberties, banning GMO seeds, increasing agriculture, firing the city attorney and manager, cutting taxes and spending, taxes and, spending and putting human need over corporate greed, um, and all these other issues will really not matter when we have martial law like in Ferguson, Missouri. So visit my website at freeencinitas.org. Let's get free. It's not about the lesser or two evils. It's all power to the people. Peace, guys. Also, free Palestine and the wars in Syria and Iraq.